Welcome to Prime 9, the countdown show that covers the very best in baseball. Guaranteed to start arguments, not end them. This episode features the nine best sliders and the pitchers who threw them. Why nine? That's baseball. Nine players, nine innings. Prime 9. You know it when you see a great slider. It comes out of the pitcher's hand looking much like a fastball, and then, just like that, it's gone. That's what we were looking for in our search for the Prime 9 sliders, the wow factor. Wow, <laughs> that's a nasty looking slider. Yeah. Sliders are like snowflakes, no two are alike. So to make this list, you had to have one that totally dominated hitters. Nasty, hard breaking slider. It helped if it was your signature pitch and you needed to have success with it for a long period of time. So let's find out which pitchers threw the best sliders the game has ever seen. Starting with number nine on Prime Nine. Jim, your slider is a very important pitch to you. Can you show us how you throw it? You hold the ball the same as your fastball with your hand and fingers over the seams and release it like it's a spiral. And uh, it breaks away from a right-handed hitter for me. Hall of Famer Jim Bunning's slider baffled hitters in both leagues, so much so that when he retired in 1971, he was number two on the all-time strikeout list. Bunning never linked with the strikeout kings of the past, is nonetheless behind Walter Johnson in the all-time strikeout parade. <laughs> Jim Bunning, the slider was one of those sliders that really bit. He struck out a lot of people that way. Jim Bunning, he was so tenacious, and his motion, he came sort of three quarters, so he was exceptionally tough on right-hand hitters. Instead of up here, it comes right from about here. And I think I have a little better success, that's why I use it there. Jim Bunning, with that buggy whip delivery, becomes the first pitcher since Cy Young to win 100 or more games in both American and National League. Bunning's slider helped him pitch a no-hitter for Detroit, and on Father's Day of 1964 in New York, he slid into the live ball era record books. When I went out to the mound, everybody stood up and were cheering for me uh, to pitch the perfect game. pitcher in modern day history to pitch a no hit no run game in both legs. Jim, congratulations. Thank you very much, Ralph. Wow. <laughs> One of them days. I went up to the clubhouse and realized what I had just done. And I almost collapsed. And on this wonderful Father's Day, everyone has to be happy for a Jim Bunny. In September of 2002, the Angels called Francisco Rodriguez up to the majors. Rarely have we seen a pitcher's slider make such an immediate impact. He got him! And Rodriguez spun around on the mound and threw his fist into the air. He was only 20 years old, but he threw like a grizzled vet. Rodriguez runs off the field, striking out Sanders. He won five games that year, including one in the World Series. He comes in and he faced like guys that were veteran hitters and they looked ridiculous. Slider struck him out! By 2005, K-Rod had become the Angels' full-time closer and proceeded to lead the American League in saves three of the next four years. The wicked slider strikes out Rodriguez. Ooh. Looks like it's gonna come into the zone, but never does. You just see the buckle in the hitter's knees and you see the reaction on the hitter's faces and you just know how good that slider is after he throws it. Oh my goodness. Dude, this guy's, he's phenomenal. His ball is moving, it's moving like three feet. Wow, that had some nasty break to it. It's a weapon for him because he's absolutely fearless out there on the mound. It didn't matter the situation of the game. It didn't matter who was on base or what inning it was. He'll throw it at any time. He mows down the heart of the batting order. K-Rod's vicious slider helped him save 40 or more games four consecutive years. Swung on and missed, strike three. And it sizzled in 2008 as he closed in on the single season save record. I'm not thinking about 40, 50,000 making noise. I'm not thinking who's coming out. I just focus and make sure to get a job done. Francisco Rodriguez, nobody has ever done it. 
He went on to save an all-time record 62 games that year thanks to his slight. He's racked up more saves than anybody in the history of baseball. When he's in the game, you know you're losing. That's not a good sign. Welcome back to Prime 9, featuring the pitchers with the nine best sliders. You've seen numbers 9 and 8, which means it's time for number 7. Bob Lemon had a good slider that he could throw for a strike any time he wanted to. We don't know for certain when the first slider was tossed, but starting in the late 1940s, Bob Lemon made a name for himself by throwing one. We never saw that before, and that's a faster pitch that breaks late and sharp, and Bob Lemon developed that. It was new, it was different, it was untouchable. Lemon has been the Indian clutch pitcher this season, winning 23 games. In fact, Bob won 20 or more games seven times, and on three occasions, he led the American League in wins. Hitters were simply baffled by his slider. It wasn't one of those sliders that really bit, but it kept going all the time to the outside part of the plate. Bob Lemon was a major reason why Cleveland was so successful in the 1950s. The 1954 Indians set an American League record with 111 wins. And it was largely due to their pitching staff. This was a tremendous bunch. All of them had ERAs around two and a half or lower. And thanks in part to his slider, Bob's 23 wins were tied for the most on both his team and in the league. No wonder they called Bob Lemon the one-man ball club. The slider for Lemon was his pitch. That was his money pitch. Bob Lemon is in the Hall of Fame where he should be and one of the greatest pitchers of all time, but the slider's what made him. There's no doubt Dave Steeb, for years, uh, had some of the best stuff in the American League. There's that side on breaking pitch again. A pitch that had such snap to it. Oh, like a magnet was pulling it down. It broke in the hitting area with tremendous force. When it came to sliders, Steeb's stood out. A lot of guys throw their back out swinging at that junk. It worked for him. It wasn't successful for the batters. He just mowed us down. I mean, it was obviously the best slider in a 10, 11 year period there. In fact, Steve had the second most wins of anyone in baseball in the 80s. The key to Dave Steve's slider really, it came out of the same arm slot at his fastball. You could not go up looking for strictly a slider off of Dave Steve. He's looking for that breaking pitch. Now he strikes out on a fastball. It was a pretty good pitch to hit. Grip the slider just like a fastball and uh, just throw it like a fastball. Think fastball. Make it look like a fastball with the late break. Uncanny control of that breaking pitch all night. There's no doubt the combination of the fastball and slider were dominating. When Dave Steele went to the mound, anything could happen. You know, you always thought about no hitters. Hmm, wonder why. Could it be that the seven-time All-Star threw five career one-hitters, coming painfully close to a no-no four times? He needs one more out. He had incredible innings one through eight and uh, came up short a few times for a no-hitter. He had that stuff, and he was nasty. He was really one of the best sliders in the game. And eventually, that pitch helped Dave slide into the record books. He has got a no-hitter for Dave Steve. Just being so close so many times, it was a great weight lifted off my shoulders, never having to answer that question, do you think you'll ever get one? Question asked and answered. Welcome back to Prime 9, featuring the game's best sliders. Jim Bunning checked in at number 9, followed by Frankie Rodriguez. Next came Bob Lemon at 7 and Dave Steve at 6, which means it's time for number 5. I remember one of the first times I ever pitched against him. We were at the batting cage, and I said, hello, Mr. Gibson. He looked at me and didn't say a word and walked away. 
It was his mound, it was his game, the most competitive pitcher I ever faced. Gibson's intensity is legendary, but those who did face him are more inclined to recall his arsenal of pitches, especially his deadly slider. Bob Gibson had the best slider that I've ever seen or caught. I got to catch Bobby. Such a violent delivery, and then all of a sudden, a nasty slider. Bob had a nasty slider. He just covered both sides of the plate. He, he made you feel uncomfortable, and that's how he pitched. He made his pitch with a slider and, and great control. Uh, he was tough. This is one thing I didn't tell a lot of people, but my wife used to go to the restroom when I faced in Gibby, because you don't want to see it, <laughs> I guess. Of this Hall of Famer's nine 200 strikeout seasons, one year stood above the rest. 1968, the so-called year of the pitcher, and Bob Gibson's achievement stands out the most. An ERA for the entire year of 1.12, just ridiculous. And he capped it off with a tour de force in game one of the World Series. Scouting reports had me basically a fastball pitcher, which I was, but my best pitch was a slider. Well, they come at you hard at all times, and they play the slider right off the fastball. The reason I was so successful with them was because I threw my slider a little bit more than I normally did. He got it! Struck him out! A new world record of 17 strikeouts in one game. In the year of the pitcher, 1968, no one had a more ferocious slider than Gibson. Sparky Lyle having his finest season. Struck him out, Sparky Lyle. Lyle delivers, swung on and missed strike three. How did Sparky Lyle develop such a devastating slider? He strikes him out to end it. Another strikeout for Lyle. It began when he was a minor league pitcher in the Red Sox organization. Ted Williams had a lot to do with that. He told me the best pitch in baseball is a slider. And he says, and I'll tell you why, because I couldn't hit that pitch consistently, even when I knew it was coming. And he says, if you're going to get to the big leagues, you got to throw that pitch. And I used to lay in bed at night with this ball in my hand, trying to figure out how I got to throw this thing, and make it spin this way to do what he said. Obviously, Sparky managed to figure it out. Oh, there was a hard slider. It just popped in there. When Sparky was traded to the Yankees, his slider made him an elite ace reliever. On a different spark, his slider now, he ain't like the rest of them, it, it, it bites you all the time. I mean, he throw the type of slider just keep biting you. Lyle delivers, swung on and missed strike three. One of the best sliders in, in baseball. He comes right after you and he know how to pitch. Rip butter pitch from Sparky Lyle is the hard slider. Hook him out. When I saw the results of this thing, I just made up my mind right then and there. Why in the hell should I even throw another pitch? And for the most part, he didn't, relying on the slider almost exclusively. Well, he gonna put it in the headline in the paper, if you hit Sparky Law, you're gonna hit the slider. Sparky now, and we're down 11 in a row. Every time he needed to strike out, you knew the slider was coming. Look him out. The thing that amazed me most about him was his ability to repeat that slider pitch after pitch after pitch. He would throw it three or four or five times in a row. Lyle comes into Van Rojas. I could throw it in the same place every time because it just exploded on the hitter. I could have thrown that thing blindfolded. Another brilliant relief job. Sparky Lyle was just too much. Steve had the best motion I ever saw. He was a picture to watch throw, and he just was such a hard worker and understood his pitching style so good. Batters had little recourse against Carlton, for he went right at them with an unforgettable pitch. The greatest thing he had was a hard slider. No one could hit that. And he just kept throwing, and they knew it was coming. Oh, they knew all right. They just couldn't hit it. Well, I unfortunately had to face Steve Carlton in those years, and uh, he had a dominant slider. Come on, lefty, strike him out! Great slider, had the great control back in those days. Not too many pitches through a slider, let alone a good one like he had. Without question, Steve Carlton had the nastiest left-handed slider. 
had the most remarkable, consistent, best spinning slider that I'd ever seen. Few men who took the mound had better control of a pitch that possessed such a bat flailing break. He said there were times with that slider when he could actually pinpoint it a half an inch where he wanted to pitch it. Once I hit that stride, I, mean, I just made incredible pitches. I never threw a ball down the heart of the plate. I just constantly worked the corner. It was wind day when Lefty pitched, thanks to his slider and his focus. He put earplugs in his ears to block out everything. It was just he and the catcher's mitt. Nothing else existed. Most of the time, he kept a slider in this side part of the plate. It was so sharp and so big, it was difficult to follow the ball. Swing and a miss, the slider down and in, and he struck him out. He was able to locate it wherever he wanted, whenever he wanted. The decade's most dominant pitcher. I actually felt bad for the hitters because I never saw a pitch move quite that much. It would break down three feet down and in to a right-handed hitter. He had an uncanny ability to throw his slider for a strike when the batter took it, but yet when they swung at it, it would be below the strike zone. How he did that, I really don't know. I take my hat off, Steve Cardinal. We now return to Prime 9, where in this episode, we're featuring the pitchers with the game's nastiest sliders. Up to now, every one of our slider specialists has had one thing in common. None of them stood taller than six foot four. You've probably guessed by now, that string is about to end. So without further ado, we bring you number two. Randy Johnson was uh, one of those guys you didn't enjoy facing. He's got those long arms, got the hair coming out of the back of the hat, just a very intimidating figure. And, and for me, lefty on lefty, it almost looked like he was coming behind me at times, especially with that slider. Randy Johnson had one of the great pitches in baseball. Mr. Snappy. It was unbelievable. And there's a wave and a miss for a strike three. That is Mr. Snappy. He got the nickname Mr. Snappy because of the slider. The slider would always break down and into a right-handed batter and get that right-handed batter on the rear foot every time. That slider must really be wicked today. He would throw Mr. Snappy to a left-handed hitter, and there's no way a left-handed hitter could, could hang in there against that type of breaking ball. Randy Johnson's not your run-of-the-mill lefty. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night. He looked at the bouncer when he pitched, the ball coming from so high that you see the ball is coming straight down, like it's coming from the building down. When he was on, it came out looking like his fastball and just absolutely disappeared towards your back leg. No way you could touch it. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's that slider. Mr. Snappy helped Johnson finish his career with the most strikeout per nine inning ratio and the second most Ks in baseball history. Teams set to face him often came down with a not so mysterious disease. Pretty much for my career, I've ducked Randy Johnson. In our little circle, we call it Randy Johnson-itis, and I've had that a few times. He struck him out swinging. Strikes him the side. Sometimes he rendered teams hitless. And once, he left them baseless. He got it. A perfect game. The big unit slider helped punch his ticket to Cooperstown. That pitch right there, that helped put Randy Johnson in the Hall of Fame. No doubt about it. 300-plus wins, five Cy Young Awards, co-MVP in a World Series back in 2001. Hall of Fame because of that. A lot of times when you see those guys in highlight films swinging at those pitches, they were just all sliders. That's all it was. I wasn't fooling anybody. Well, we beg to differ. After all, how else can you make the game's best hitters Breaking ball is one and a miss. look so helpless at the plate? In my personal opinion, his slider was Probably number one, it was the quickest breaking slider I ever seen. It was in and out of the zone so fast, you couldn't lay off of it. 
He had a fastball that came down the middle and would explode away. And his slider was so tight, he threw it right down the middle, but it exploded down and in. He was smart enough to know he didn't have to throw it over the plate if they keep swinging at it. As soon as he got two strikes, especially in Yankee Stadium, everybody's like, every time they, they screamed, the guy swung. Breaking ball is going on a mess. He's like, don't swing. Just four years in the Gators' big league career, he had a season for the ages. 78, Gidry mastered that slider. He looked unhittable. Yes, sir. Goodbye. The game where he had 18 strikeouts against the Angels at Yankee Stadium. Swung on. I remember Don Baylor had went up to the plate and he came back in three pitches. Swung on and missed Donnie with a breaking ball. And when he came back to the dugout, he just said, well, men, let's just get through the night and wait for tomorrow. He was the toughest pitcher I ever faced for one given year. He also had nine shutouts that year, tying Babe Ruth's AL record for most by a lefty. Cy Young Award was inevitable. He was absolutely unhittable. He was head and shoulders above the next best pitcher. That was the year of Guidry. In an eight-year span, Guidry won 20 games three times and captured two ERA titles, thanks in great part to a pitch that came off his hand like a bolt of Louisiana lightning. I had a chance to see Ron Guidry, and I think Ron Guidry, he was masterful with that slider. That was one of the best sliders that I ever saw. Gidry is part of a rather unique slider lineage that extends no further than the burrow of the Bronx. You see, Gator was taught the slider by the great Sparky Lyon. Oh, there was that hard slider. It just popped in there. Gidry, in turn, taught the slider to Dave Reggetti. And he gets it! A no-hitter! A no-hitter for Dave Reggetti! And Rags helped out lighter with the pitch. There's the 3-2. He struck him out swinging. For more than a decade, the art of the slider was passed from one Yankee lefty to another. And while Leiter did have the slider in his bag of tricks, his go-to pitch was actually the cutter. Swings and misses, he struck him out with a cutter. But then, that's another show altogether. Well, that's our prime nine. What's yours?